everything around us is a lie. A city plagued with murder and corruption. Led by two callous rivals. I used to believe I had the power to control them. justice. Okay, when we first took the Long Halloween graphic novel, we realised that there was a lot of the stuff in there that we couldn't keep because of the vast volume of it. A lot of it was just sort of images and uh, obviously there was lots of elements such as the super superhero characters which we couldn't keep otherwise it wouldn't pertain to the naturalistic film noir style. Um, it was also challenging to sort of develop a script from that and also convert some of those superheroes into more naturalistic characters. Um, that was one of the biggest challenges of writing the script. To start off the development of our film, we decided to explore our storylines and characters using workshops. The main workshops that we did focused on the reality of death and murder opposed to the mediated version, which is one of our main themes in our film. During this workshop, we developed our understanding of what it means to have loved and lost. It was a very personal workshop, and we believed that the reason we were also willing to be open with one another is because of the trust and support within the group. After all giving deep explanations of the person we love most in the world, our director told us to imagine them being killed. This hit us all very hard. It helped us realise that we were being too casual about murder. A lot of characters within the film lose people close to them. If we want an audience to believe in this, the reactions needed to be real. Later on in the workshop, we were faced with the murderers who killed our loved ones. Yet another thing that happens to some of the characters within the film. The tension that we all felt at this time proved to us how serious the situation would be in reality. Altogether, it was a very successful workshop. We can all see the gravity and emotion that developed on this day in the final film. For example, the following scene with Mentone and Cartalia. There's no strength in murdering a vulnerable old man like my father. Don't patronise me about loss. I've nearly lost my entire family. And all the facts point to you. To me? You think I'm Holiday? <laughs> You'd think that just to bring you down, I'd openly kill all your family. Theodore accused me of that, and now you. How stupid do you think I am? Okay, so you've just seen the scene there uh, between Carmen Cartelia and Persephone Mento. Um, the one thing that really struck me about this scene, um, it's, quite a both, uh, it's quite an emotional scene for both of the actresses. Um, and for them, being trained in a natural way that we have, they wanted to explode um, and they wanted to just let go. But embracing the film noir technique that we've been using, um, we had to make everything, bring everything down, stylistic, monotone voices, and keep the urge and the feeling inside. Um, and I think that that seems a prime example of the way to take naturalistic acting into the film noir genre. I did hair and makeup for the film The Calendar. Um, the film noir genre, um, doesn't really allow for anything to be out of place. Everything's very specific and neat and clean. Um, for example, if you look at all the male characters' costumes, they're all in suits. Their shirts are always done up to the top. Uh, they've got ties and nothing is really out of place. And their hair is also the same. For example, if you look at Theodore Cartelia, his hair is slicked down and always perfect. Um, the only time anything ever comes out of place is when Harry Sharp goes mad and we've just untucked his shirt quite simply to just show the disposition of it. Um, a lot of our female actresses took on male roles as well, um, so we incorporated the traditional male hairstyle of being slicked down, but then also added the female style of curls because the curls are used to soften the features of the females, as their costume is always very angular and doesn't really allow for much fluentness in it. For the trailer, we decided to use casualty makeup to create a sense of real injury. The use of blood and bullet wounds looked very realistic on film. 
We also decided to make our resident psychopath look tired and crazy by using makeup to darken her eyes and draw out her features. Her skin was paled down to give her a deathly morbid look. The overall effect was for people to recognise her status and role within the film. But after feedback and research into film noir, we realised that the genre, or style, is so precise that to have even one hair out of place was enough to make someone look crazy. After exploring this, we found out it was far more disturbing to have someone who looked so pristine and calm on the outside to be so sick and twisted on the inside. Throughout our film, we came across many problems. Because we were only a very small cast, there were only 10 of us, on your normal big budget film, you will have a really large group of people helping to produce the movie. Because we only had 10, we had certain jobs that were allocated to certain people. For example, Sally Upward was our director, and we had Peter Snee as our cinematographer. Um, but whereas all the small little jobs that need to be done, like key grip and buffer boy and all the little things that you see on credits, we didn't have anyone to allocate those jobs to. So some of us took the responsibility of doing all the tiny little jobs, which are just as important as the big ones. For example, um, when we blew up the car, that needed all to get organised, and I took that upon myself um, to make contacts with the fire brigade, check with the council, get the land for it, get the actual car. And so we did all of this, and because of the contacts that I made, it man we managed to go through with it. During our three weeks on location, we found it was very important to maintain a good relationship with the police service in Bath. Um, for our trailer, we threw a dummy over a bridge and off of a building, and we had lots of problems with drunken passers-by, thinking it was a real person suffering and panicking. And luckily, because we had already had set the relationship and set the tones with the police, they knew what we were doing, they were aware of it, they gave us our own crime number to report anything that went wrong, and that worked really well for us. Um, we had quite a few problems with the public, actually, during filming. Uh, for example, we went to Newton St. Lowe, which is a very small village with only a few houses, but we were there at night time to use the darkness. Um, we did, unfortunately, wake up uh, a gentleman who lived in one of the houses we were filming outside of, and he came outside and expressed his anger to us, um, which meant that we couldn't uh, finish our filming. But what we did have, we've made a really good introduction for our film of. When we started the project of the calendar, I took on the role of marketing and promotions. This meant I was in charge of developing a flyer and a product from what we were making. I have since entered our film into a lot of different festivals around the country um, and around the world. Actually, we're entered now into Rome International Film Festival on a website called www.withoutabox.com, which I recommend for anyone who's trying to get their work out there. Um, we had a bit of trouble with our advertising to begin with because we had a mix-up with our name. We were originally The Long Halloween, but because of copyright we had to change to the calendar. So while we were at university performing, it was The Long Halloween, but now we're taking it out into the world to share our work with other people. It's now the calendar. For our trailer, we decided to use stunts to develop the graphic novel genre within our film. From the adaptations that have been made in cinema, there is always a full use of stunts, but because of our lack of budget, we were limited as to what we could create and achieve. As you can see, what we did have, we used to our fullest advantage. The use of a resuscitation annie meant that we were able to throw a character into the river and off a building. Careful planning and filming of the real characters meant that the stunts fit in well and looked real. We were really lucky because we were filming in Bath and a lot of the architecture here is very grand and it is of the film noir style in keeping with what we were trying to create. When we drew up the storyboards we took most of the storyboards directly from the graphic novel because the illustrator for the graphic novel has drawn them exactly as he wants the viewer to read them so we just took them straight out of there because we could give that across to an audience and it would all just make sense in, in the style of the piece. Um, when I was looking at the storyboarding for Briony West, um, I, that's literally an example of a scene just taken straight from the book and put straight onto film, if you look at that piece of film. In the trailer, we used a mixture of colour and desaturated colour. It was mentioned in feedback that we should not mix the two, but make a choice. We had originally mixed the use of colour to show real time and past events, a dark side, and the fake front that each character puts on when in the public eye. 
At first, we thought this would work really well, but the audience found it too confusing to handle this concept as there seemed to be too many styles. After reviewing the feedback as a company, we decided to follow the film noir genre and style fully. We realised that using full colour would make it difficult to create dramatic shadows and continuity of light, so the decision was made to go for black and white. This led us to the advantage of being able to create shadows and dramatic tension with the use of light. It's night time, pitch black. We can't afford a generator. What do we do? So, look around. One car on your right, one car behind, one car on your left. Full beams all the way. If you have a look down at the floor, you'll see shadows. Shadows that move in different directions. If you look at the way the shadow is elongated, um, all the way up to the door, it's a really purposeful film noir effect that we're using. Hi, uh, we're going to talk about the continuity on the film The Calendar. Basically what our job was, was to uh, get a camera and just to take photos of all the uh, actors. Um, and this was really important because um, we had to get their hair right and their makeup had to look right in every single scene because film noir is um, so really... Specific. Yeah, so specific. Yeah, so specific with and their, stuff. So we had to make sure look. all the photos matched each shot so that there wasn't sort of fault with every scene as they were edited together. Yeah, and we learnt from this um, because there was some times when we didn't take photos of the characters, um, of the actors, and there was a scene that followed on um, that we filmed on a different day, and we hadn't taken the photo from a previous scene. So, um, yeah, we weren't able to match up those two scenes together because they had to wear the same costume. So, yeah, that was a fault of ours, wasn't it? So we didn't, we didn't take the photos of them. We had um, to take pictures of, like, sets, uh, for example, um, Dawn Stevens' desk. Um, so everything had um, a specific uh, place, um, so we just had to make sure that um, sort of fitted the continuity as well as sort of the actors themselves, mm. the set had to be exactly the same as well. Yeah, and we put marks down as well for uh, the actors to walk into, so they were into the frame and everything, so they remained uh, the same place every time they would, you know, different takes that we would take, they yeah. would uh, come into the same place every time, so... That was all to do with continuity as well, and the eye line as well, where they were looking. Um, but yeah, but we, from research, we knew that film noir uh, characters and actors, they all have, just their hair is all the same, their look is all the same, and the actors are very good at doing that. Like costume, so if, um, <coughs> but if something was buttoned up or zipped up, we had to make sure that that still remained the mm. same in the next scene. So. Yeah, and that's about it. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the music that we used on our film. Uh, when we first did the trailer, we used uh, some music that was already existing, which was uh, from Buffy and Shenmue and all this sort of stuff, and it went really well with our trailer. But then when we got feedback from the trailer, we realised that we couldn't use any pre-existing music um, because it was all copyrighted. So we went about um, the music, we went and got some music students um, to come in and do some original music for us that was in the style of film noir, uh, which was like piano music, um, orchestral kind of stuff, stuff that was a bit eerie, um, but still quite epic. And then the theme tune, um, I originally composed on the piano, but then my friend produced it for us and put like drums and bass and all that sort of stuff to it. So, that's the end of our making our part of our DVD. Um, I think it's fair to say that making a film um, has been a really enjoyable experience for all of us and quite a big learning curve. I know for me I've learned a lot about working in and around cameras. I mean one thing that sticks out um, when we were doing any of the scenes we had a master shot which is the scene as a whole played through from start to finish as an, like an establishing shot um, and then we cut away to close-ups and we filmed all the close-ups. Now when you do a close-up um, you'd think naturally um, that you just look in exactly the same place um, as you were in the master uh, but we found that the best way to get the sort of the best view of the actor's eyes um, and to really engage with the character was normally to put a bit of blue tack on the wall um, and the actors found it quite difficult because it meant that they were playing these quite emotional scenes to a piece of blue tack on the wall but it worked it worked in the best way for the camera and it meant that um, we could really sort of engage and get in there with the um, characters themselves. So yeah, in general, um, I think to go about making a film, it's all about being dedicated, um, it's about putting in the time and the effort, and it's about having a good team. 
Um, and that's what we really had. We had a really tight team of 10 people who were all willing to work the hardest that they ever could to make it possible. Um, and I think if we didn't have that, then we never would have been able to do it. And so I'm really proud of everyone. Thanks. Bye. One for the camera, Solomon. Solomon Grundy, born on a Monday. <laughs>